Oh, oh, we are off and going, baby. What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. Welcome, bike, to the beautiful platform known as Underdog Fantasy. We are doing a 2021 fantasy football mock draft. It's not really, really a mock draft because we do have some scrilla, some scrilla on the line. Okay. For those of y'all that have never competed in best ball, best ball is basically this form of fantasy football where the only thing you do is draft, okay? So you can draft in high volume. You could do 67 drafts at a time if you want, and you don't have to do any in-season management. You don't have to do waiver wire. You don't have to make trades you don't have to do sit start so all of the nonsense and the bullshit that everybody hates you don't actually have to do which is why best ball is becoming increasingly popular amongst the minions shout out to roto underworld amongst the public shout out to y'all amongst the big dog shout out to really y'all so here's how this thing this 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 thing works since you don't do any in-season management you're basically drafting a big ass team and then underdog software, their software automatically starts the best players at each position each week. So you got one quarterback, you got two running backs, you got three wide receivers and you got one tight end and you draft a team of 18 players. So you don't got kickers, you don't got defenses. So the worst part, basically they chop out the worst parts of fantasy football. It's like, uh, you know, you buy a steak, you buy a steak and everybody loves steak. Everybody likes steak. But there's a lot of fat to be trimmed, right? That nasty shit that don't really get cooked nicely. Unless you a nasty motherfucker. Those nasty dudes are the ones who play in like, you know, Devi leagues and stuff like that. The 24 team carbon copy bullshits, whatever they're talking about. Like, that's what a normal steak looks like with everything included. I, but I, I can't handle that shit. It gives me anxiety. It gives me fucking stress. Whatever, 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 right? Best ball takes the best parts of it. And uh, let me get this out the way for y'all. And it leaves only the fun parts, okay? So that's where we're at right now. First six picks off the board. Six running backs right off the rip. Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley, Derek Henry, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Jonathan Taylor. Not very different than my running back rankings. I dropped my 7 through 12 running back rankings yesterday, or actually on Thursday, so two days ago when y'all are watching this on Saturday morning. Happy Saturday morning. Happy weekend. I hope y'all are sipping down some margs tonight in respect to National Mark Day being earlier this week. Let's... uh. Oh, I'm not even in the draft. I love that. I love that. This is like, you know, you're catching me raw. You're catching me prime. These mock drafts are usually an absolute shit show. So I apologize if like, uh, you know, we go crazy. I'm, I'm at the 110. I'm at the 110. This is a 12 teamer. This is the 12 teamer. It's half PPR. One quarterback. So we have the first six picks off the board. We're running backs. Okay. And that's probably going to be a theme that we see a lot this year. We have Kelsey at the one seven. We've got Adams at the one eight. Stop. 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 I don't need your notifications. Just don't need it. Nick Chubb at the one nine. I really like that pick. Now I started, you know, last last draft I did. We're we're gonna do a bunch of these throughout the summer. Let me move myself into the middle. We're gonna do a bunch of these throughout the summer. I know you guys get as much anxiety as I do when I'm on the clock as I stay missing my picks. We started off with Zeke at the one ten last time as well. I don't know why they always give me this. So I kind of want to switch things up a little bit and uh grab some Shkrilla with Mr. Cam Akers, who I have right now as the RB9. In my rankings, fairly, I did I did rank Zeke above above Cam Akers. But, you know, I do a lot of these best ball drafts. So, again, I usually echo the the sentiment. Don't worry about necessarily the players I'm drafting. You just kind of listen to the analysis, and y'all can make your own picks for yourself if you want. Um, also, the link to sign up, the link to sign up. Oh, Roto Underworld, the name. I wonder if that's uh, – I wonder who that is. I wonder if that's, like, Cody or, or someone uh, on the Roto Underworld team. What a what a weird coincidence that I'm repping their gear, and they're, they're in here trying to fuck my money up. Don't come in here and try to play with my paper. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. That's why we draft Cam Akers, because Cam Akers has been averaging 24 touches a game over the last six games for the Rams. He about to be the workhorse next year. Malcolm Brown's a free agent. They bring in Matt Stafford. Tons of goal line opportunity. So I don't remember what I was saying, but I, I, I diversify. That's what that's that's really what this comes down to. OK, so I try to diversify in these best ball drafts because I'm going to do a lot of them. So listen to my player analysis. I think Cam Akers versus Zeke is a very good argument. I think Cam Akers at this point probably has a higher ceiling. 
because he's, you know, I think they're probably equal in talent. They both have the size. They're both going to get workhorse touches. They both are in good enough offenses where they're getting goal line opportunities. I think the upside of the offense in, um, in LA is probably just as high as Dallas's, but Dallas's offensive line has kind of been deteriorating. Whereas the Rams, they were great. They kind of fell off. I think they showed a little bit of improvement down the stretch last year. And I expect them to be pretty good going into 2021. So I, I like that. That's, that's a, that's a combo. I would probably switch back and forth on acres and, and Zeke, but you're seeing a ton of running backs, right? We had, what was it? Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, uh, 10. Oh, I'm back on bike. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lordy, Lord. We had like 10 running backs in the first. Uh... They also have an absolutely flawless app. Their underdog, I would highly suggest drafting on their underdog app. Uh, we're going to go with J.K. Dobbins here. I really like to just just hit my running backs early and often. Please tell me I got him. Okay, we got J.K. Dobbins. Let's fucking go. All right. Um, I tend to go with the running backs early, often, because once we hit the fourth, fifth round, there is no value left there. There's no sharper ADP than on underdog, okay? Their shit is shop. Their shit is the opposite of animal, okay? I'm actually, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. I got I'm interviewing. Oh, my God. I, no, I'm, I'm good. That's at one o'clock. So I'm interviewing the CEO of Sleeper. You know, the Sleeper app that y'all play fantasy. A lot of you guys do your mock drafts on. A lot of you guys play your dynasty leagues on Sleeper. So I do the series, and some of you guys, if you actually like me, if you actually like my content, which I appreciate you watching, by the way, um, I do a series, you know, in the off season every Monday, where I inf- uh, where I interview someone who I think is influencing the space, the fantasy sports space, from a branding and marketing and business perspective, and uh, I somehow got the CEO of Sleeper, Nan Wang, Nan or Nan, I don't know, is that like disrespectful if I don't know how to say that person, his name? It's N A N Wang, so it's I don't know if it's Nan or Nan. First thing I'm gonna say to him is like, "How do I say your name, bro? How do I say your name?" Anyways, um, so it's crazy because like I, can't, I how did I get in touch with him? Like I, I literally I um, I was trying to figure out like who do I get in touch with to try to get the CEO or like a president or someone higher up in the company that can like tell me some business details about what's going on there, and. We're going to get into player analysis in a minute, I promise. I just, I'm just i just fucking going off the rip here. And uh, I'm reading TechCrunch articles. So for those of you guys who don't know what TechCrunch is, it's basically like a website or a blog that covers anything like business, you know, startup business. So anything that happens in the business world, you know, someone raises startup money or whatever, they get articles written about it there. Just keeping you up to date in the, in the technology world kind of. And... I'm reading through the sleeper articles, right? Because they raised, you know, $2 million in seed money. Then they had a round day of like 5 mil. Then they just raised another 20 million in, I believe it was September. So I got a bunch of articles written on them. So I'm finding the CEO's name in there. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. There's, there's, there, I think there was four co-founders. There's four co-founders. And I'm like, okay, one of them's got to answer me. However, I don't have their fucking email addresses, right? They don't just like put that shit out there for everybody. So I, uh, so I just take their names. And I just start firing off random emails. I'm like, you know, non at sleeper.com, non at sleeper.app, non dot wang at sleeper.com. You know, I'm just shooting off like fucking 36 fucking blank shots everywhere. And uh, and someone, one of the four answered me. Luckily, I got one of the email addresses and they're like, I'm going to forward you to to non because he is a more of an on camera in front of the camera microphone kind of guy than the rest of us. He's our CEO. He's our front facing guys. They would say in the, in the fuck biz front facer. And he forwarded me to, to, to non. And I gave him, you know, like nice to meet you, that kind of bullshit. And he didn't answer me. So I followed bike up, didn't answer me again, followed bike up. And then he finally answered me. See, it's about persistence. It's about being resourceful. Just life lesson right there. Anything you need to be successful was just dropped into that story. Being resourceful, using random outside resources to figure out where you need to get to, and then being persistent about it, man. That's it. We drop in knowledge. So anyways, that was a long-winded way of saying that I have to interview him in about two hours, and I shouldn't be doing this video right now because I should be preparing for that. Okay, we are almost bike on the clock. 
We're going to do a little rewind of everybody that was picked. And this is why we go running backs early, because look who is left on the board in the third round. We have Michael Thomas. We have Keenan Allen. We have Allen Robinson. We have Patrick Mahomes. You can grab a David Montgomery. You can grab some of these rookie running backs. And Najee Harris is already off the board. AJ Dillon already a third round pick. You love, you love, you love to see that because all this, this, I'm, uh, I'm going with Keenan for right now. Over Allen Robinson, because Allen Robinson a free agent. we got no idea where he's going to land, but I really like Keenan. I really like Keenan um, with Justin Herbert for the full year next year. So I'm, I'm a big fan of that pick. We'll be back on the board in a second. I can show you the full draft board, I believe, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to like make picks based off of that. So we go Cam Akers. We go J.K. Dobbins. We love these sophomore running backs. The sophomore running backs are going to be the league winners this year. Ain't no if ands, buts, or schmutz about it, baby. Oh, we are bike on the clock. I'm scared. I'm scared. I need to be paying attention to stocks right now. Stock the score just went live on the Nasdaq, and they put it onto Robinhood. So I put money into that. I, I made a quick 400 off GameStop last night. Bought it at 91. Sold it at 165 this morning. Got out as soon as that shit started plummeting. Your boy is eating NBA Top Shot packs drop at noon. Oh my god, we're in a fucking frenzy. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna take Patrick Mahomes. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm gonna do it. Fuck, I should take Mike Evans. Okay, um, doesn't matter. Eh, Patrick Mahomes at the 4-3. I don't hate it. Last year, I mean, listen, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson. I, I do think Lamar Jackson is probably the best value outside of Jalen Hurts. Like, Lamar Jackson is going to put up similar numbers that he put up last year. He was a back-end second-round pick. So basically, I'm just arguing against myself and the dumb picks I fucking made. All right, let's take a look at the board. Take a look at the board up, up, at the, up, up to this point. Where can I put myself that I'm just out of the way? Maybe up here. Yeah, that works. I feel like I have this conversation every time. Oh, see, the design I made is just not friendly for this right here. You know what? I'm going to drop my stuff. Uh, go follow me on Twitter if you don't follow me already. At Nick underscore BDGE. It's right there. Let me X this out. Cool. Bing, bang, boom. Put myself on the top right, and we can look at the board a little bit. So the first round, again, was heavily running back weighted. And then the second round was heavily running back weighted as well. You look at the first 24 picks. And it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 18 of the first 24 picks were running backs, which is why if you fade the market like you're betting on. Here, here's the thing. It, it can work in two ways. It can work in two ways. One, you have to hit on all the wide receivers that you take, right? If you're going to use while everybody else is hitting running backs, you're going to use those early picks on wide receivers. You better fucking hit on those guys, right? If they're not putting up Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill type numbers, your season's flopped. The other way is if you're banking on a historical year, by the way, like it, coming into this year, people are going to be higher on wide receivers again than running backs early on, or at least, you know, I think the public will be. But the problem is last year was a historically high year. It was the highest scoring year for the passing offenses in the NFL ever passing touchdowns, receiving yards, like those kind of things. We're not getting that again, okay? So it was like a confluence of perfect events where a lot of running backs busted, very similar to 2015. So I will be going with running backs again. I'm not going to be fading what's going on in the first two rounds here as you see a zillion fucking running backs off the board. Um, So it's interesting. We have Travis Kelsey up at the 1-7. You have – I'm lesser – I'm lesser in the category of wanting to use an early pick on a tight end in these in these formats. You don't have to choose who you want to start. So again, if, if you if you don't have the underdog app, uh, the first link in the description down below and the first link pinned in the comments will be for the underdog app. Um, so go download that. It's available on iOS. It's available on Android. And then I will be uh, tweeting out when these drafts start. When I do these drafts with y'all, I'll be putting into our Discord channel as well, which is available to our Patreons. Which is available to the Patreon. And, um, and, uh, and yeah, so go download the app. And if you deposit any money on here, these drafts, obviously, they have money on the line, which is why their ADP is so fucking sharp. These are $3 drafts. So you're not exactly mock drafting, but you get a really, really realistic view of how these drafts go and it's good to kind of just keep tabs on the adp and where players are shifting and where players are going so that you're fucking shop going into your actual drafts you know um so if you deposit 10 bucks you can throw a promo code or a referral code bdge in there and that that would that would help your boy out a lot so look at the wide receivers going off in round five like you can get cooper at 412 dj moore at 52 robert woods 53 julio in the fifth round like it's so disrespectful what's happening to julio right now you guys are just trying to fucking out him. He's not in like he's not in a fucking retirement home, y'all. 
He's a good person, and he's a good football player. Yeah, guy gets one hamstring pull, and we're just done with him. We're just done with him. I can't wait for Julio to go for fourteen hundred this year. Fourteen hundred. This is the easiest fucking call on a veteran wide receiver since Adam Thielen last year. Adam Thielen, fifth round pick last year. We're gonna tell me we're just, he's not gonna ball out. Julio, same fucking thing. So easy to see coming. I'm like a fucking oh, I'm almost bike on the clock. Oh lord. Oh lord. No, why? No, don't turn auto pick on you, psycho. Okay. Oh, Chris Carson's still available there. Cortland Sutton, man. I cannot get enough Cortland Sutton shares if I fucking tried. So this is why I should not have gone with Patrick Mahomes because I could still get Deshaun Watson down here. You can get Jalen Hurts like 17 picks later. Uh, we're still looking at wide receiver because we got a couple running backs already. Chris Carson, I kind of want to take Chris Carson, to be honest. So Chris Carson, I'm just going to take because I think the value is there. If he signs with Seattle, you're probably getting a top 15 running back. If he signs elsewhere, it could be a problem. But I think he's someone that can kind of command a little bit of money. He's got so much good film, and he just played so well over the last few years that I, I do think he demands some money. I'm going to obviously do a free agent video once everybody starts landing in their in their spots. One low-key landing spot that I think would be fantastic for Chris Carson and I think makes a lot of sense is Buffalo. Like Singletary and uh, – what's up? Singletary and um, – Singletary and – Zach Moss just ain't it. They just ain't it, okay? So, they need a thumper. They need someone good. They need to imagine Chris Carson behind Josh Allen. That would be that would be a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. We got NBA Top Shot packs dropping in an hour, so we got to be on queue for 15 minutes earlier. I hope I can wrap, wrap this up between behind, behind, between behind and after and before fucking 11.45. Okay, sorry, I've had a lot of coffee today. Um. Okay, so yeah, I'm I'm okay with that again because you're still able to get these wide receivers down here. I why why is Cortland Sutton continually continually dropping to the six three the sixth round? He's gonna be healthy. He's gonna be good to go. He he's he's got the highest upside of by far and away anyone listed down here in these drafts. I will have so much Cortland Sutton this off season. It's gonna be nauseating. It's going to be nauseating. The number of times you hear me say Cortland, 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 Sutton, 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 Cortland, Sutton, Cortland, Sutton, Cortland, Sutton, Cortland, Sutton, Cortland, Sutton, bitch. Hey, Big Dog's mugs available in the store as well right now. Link will be down below. That's that's fucking clean. Look at that. That's clean. You want to get the same type of energy I got? Buy a fucking mug and drink some caffeine out of it. Big Dog's mug, of course. So now we're seeing that run of uh, quarterbacks here. I will continue to say it until Jalen Hurst becomes a six-round pick. He's easily, by far and away, the best value draft at the quarterback position in underdog right now. I think if you went round by round, best value of all the picks. Actually, that's what we'll do. We'll, do, we'll play a little fun little game. We like to play games here, right? Everybody's fucking playing me all the time. We like to play some games here. Best value pick in all of the rounds here. Okay, first round, I would say uh, JT at 1-6 is great. I would say Nick Chubb at 1-9 is fantastic. Second round, best value. Eh, it's not a lot of great values there. I think everyone's kind of going about where they should be going. Joe Mixon at 2-11. Nah, fuck that. No values in the second round. Everyone's just doing doing what they're told. Every wide receiver in the third round's value. Jefferson at 3-4. A.J. Brown at 3-7. AJ Brown's probably going to be the wide receiver one overall next year. Like I really don't. I I feel like that's. I feel like that's almost a fact. I feel like it's just it's a fucking fact. You know, AJ Brown three sevens fantastic value. I think every wide receiver basically here: Brown, Metcalf, Michael Thomas, Keenan Allen, all extreme values. Fourth round, uh, I I really think Adam Thielen. I really think Adam Thielen is a bad pick this year. He's going to be a guy I'm completely avoiding. I mean, Justin just Jefferson just took over as a fucking alpha there. I I. I, I I have a hard time seeing Adam Thielen return any sort of value in the third or fourth round of drafts. Uh, I think Godwin at 4-7 is very good value. I think uh, both Dallas wide receivers. I think Cooper at 4-12 is a much better value than C.D. Lamb at 4-10. Lamar Jackson at 4-9 is a really, really good value in my opinion. And the other reason I, I basically said that I don't like drafting tight ends early is because, because of the software, because they start the best players each week automatically for you. Um... You can you can 
round up a few of the later round tight ends and you don't have to worry about who to start each week. So if you grab like two or three high upside athletic tight ends, you don't have to worry about which one you have to start, which in season long, the reason you want to draft a guy like Kelsey in the first round is because it's set and forget. All right. Obviously he's got upside and he's going to win you some weeks, but like he set and forget at that tight end position, which is a huge luxury nowadays in fantasy. But now, but now we can grab like two or three later round tight ends. And, you know, at least if one of them goes, you know, four for 45 and a touchdown, you're, you're set. You don't have to worry about it. So I tend to fade tight ends in uh, best ball drafts. Fifth round, another round of just incredible value at the wide receiver position. DJ Moore there, Julio, T. Higgins at 5'6". Really like that pick with Deontay Johnson. I feel like Deontay Johnson is just the most disrespected, like high upside wide receiver this year. Him and Chase Claypool, both. I, I like both of them as fifth round picks. Sixth round, uh, Ayuk, Chark, Sutton. I, I mean, may, maybe I'm fucking biased. Maybe I'm biased, but but Sutton at the 6'3 is beautiful. Now, Tyler Lockett, man, I just heard some rumors that Tyler Lockett may be headed to Miami. That would be interesting. That would be really, really interesting. We're also hearing some reports that, you know, Russell Wilson might have asked for a trade. I don't know how real that shit is, but actually, I'm going to open up a new tab. I'm going to put it. Oh, man, I hate MacBooks. Oh, shit, I'm on the clock. I don't know why I did that, like, in the middle of being on the clock. 20 seconds. Where are we at, though? I think Brandon Cooks at the end of the seventh round is a fantastic value as well. Not a big fan of Ronald Johnstein Jones, Dallas Goddard. If Zach Ertz is out, I don't, I don't, I, don't eh, 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 eh. I might just, I might just take Goddard here. Actually, he's he's pretty safe pick at the tight end position. We don't know if uh, we don't know if Zach Ertz is going to be gone. To be honest with you, that's a complete assumption. It might have been the worst pick of, of the, might have been the worst pick in the history of my best ball drafts. So if you can fucking bully me in the comments if you want, it won't, it won't, it won't fucking hurt my feelings. Nothing hurts my feelings. Nothing hurts me anymore. I wish I felt anything anymore. I'm just kidding, guys. Uh, okay, so what did I see on what did I see on uh, on Twitter? Russell will that that would be crazy. Imagine Russ and Tyler Lockett in a package deal to Miami. They give up they give up the one three. They give up Tua. They give up like a bunch of fucking picks and things. Miami Jets, New Orleans, Las Vegas linked to potential Wilson trade. Yeah, so like imagine Lockett and Wilson both going. Uh, Lockett is a guy that I'm probably not investing into either. The ones that are uh, like a little bit on the decline where they have an ascending wide receiver one taking over are the ones that I'm probably staying away from, except for fucking Julio because he's still the wide receiver one there. Uh, Where are we at, though? I'm not going to own a lot of Jerry Judy, so I kind of like want to diversify and get him every once in a while. Oh fuck! I already took Cortland Sutton. Man, I'm a problem doing these drafts. I'm I have real issues. All right, fuck it. We're just gonna do the Denver stack. We're gonna take Drew Locke as well later on in the draft. We like to stack in best ball. We like to stack in best ball because we're playing for upside. Okay, we're only playing for upside. We're playing for weekly upside. The Athletics, Michael Sean Dugar, Mike Sando, and Jason Jenks report Russell Wilson's camp has broached trade destinations with Seattle to the Dolphins, Jets, Saints, and Raiders. The report also notes that some people around the league believe a trade will happen, if not this offseason, sometime in the near future, and that those close to Wilson feel as though the pillars upon which Coach P. Carroll built this program, namely competition. <clears throat> <clears throat> namely competition. Am I back on the clock? No, I'm not. I'm not even fucking close. I'm, I'm, I'm panicking. Namely, competition and accountability are applied selectively, especially as it pertains to himself and his sons. If that truly is the... What do you mean his sons? His sons play on the team? If that truly is the case, Wilson would knowingly waive his no-trade clause to join one of four teams listed above, if only to escape Carol's reign, which runs through the 2025 season. After the organization gifted the 69-year-old an extension late last year, it's still possible this relationship is repaired, but the two sides continue to grow further and further apart. <laughs> Okay, so that can get very interesting there. Um, now, if Tyler Lockett, let's let, let's play out the scenarios. If Tyler Lockett goes to Miami, I mean, him and Devontae Parker kind of just become a poor man's version of, of any two good receiving combos that we've seen in the league before. I'm not going to like Tyler Lockett much. He'll probably be like a boomer bust wide receiver three. I think he'll be like a worse version of what we saw last year in Seattle, which was – you know, maybe more consistency, but less upside there. I, we still need to see what Tua is. I'm not writing him off, obviously, but we need to see what Tua is in terms of like what he can provide for a fantasy floor. 
Um, it makes Lockett and Devontae Parker probably both like, I would say, 7th to 10th round picks in, in fantasy next year if that's the case. Where did Jalen Hurts go off the board? Did he not get pick? Okay, 7-2. We're learning. We're finally learning, people. Matt Stafford. Ooh, Kyle Pitts, Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. Remember to download the app. Remember to download the app. Oh, speaking of, I got to put the geology link into today's video. Man, this shit is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Copy. Go to YouTube. We finna paste it in. What do you guys want me to talk about during these mock drafts? I guess that was a dumb question. I don't even know why I asked that shit. Robert Tunyon, he's a free agent as well. There's so many free agents, man. The landscape is so this, this is what makes like drafting now really fun because you can get such good values. Like if you think you have an edge on where a player might land, like I really think that that value of Chris Carson late sixth round was fucking dynamite. It's dynamite. I feel like he lands somewhere nice or resigns with Seattle, which would obviously be fantastic for a six round value. Robert Tunyon, a free agent, and you have all the rookies. Now, unfortunately, fucking underdog is so sharp that, like, you don't really get values on, on rookies anymore, especially not the running back ones. We had uh, – where did Najee Harris go off the board? I think he went off oh, – great pick with Rashad Bateman. I love that motherfucker. Najee went off the board at the 3-2. Yep, and that shit's only going to rise up. And we had Travis Etienne at the 4-1. So, I, Etienne's not a guy – Etienne's not a guy I, – I, I mean, obviously, it's gonna, all going to depend on draft cap on landing spot, but – I'm not sure he's someone I'm really trying to invest into during his rookie year for not not for season long. I mean, D Dynasty is fine; he's probably top five pick for me in rookie drafts. But um, but season long, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Great analysis, Nick. I know. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Appreciate you and your mother. Oh, we on the clock. We on the clock. Speaking of your mother. I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. Kenyon Drake, free agent. Chase Edmonds could be a big piece of the Arizona offense if Kenyon Drake is gone. I actually see this is where I kind of like Chase. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to grab Chase Edmonds here because I still think there's probably a bunch of other receivers. So Kenyon Drake's free agent. I highly doubt he resigns in Arizona. It's possible, but I doubt it. And if that's the case, I mean, uh, I don't see Arizona – you know, taking on a big offensive piece in free agency uh, at the running back position. I don't see them using a lot of draft capital on it. It's just not a position that, I don't know. It, it's a position that obviously is heavily involved, but not a position that is like super valuable in their offense, if that makes sense. Like the delta between having a great one and a decent one like Chase Edmonds is not that high up. Oh, oh, Tanya 25. Is that like a, are you throwing fucking, is that a subtweet at me? Taking Drake right after Edmonds? So we have no idea where Drake is going to land right now, okay? So he's not a guy that I'm sold on his talent. I think Drake can be fine in fantasy like last year if he's in a situation that's just going to shove him 20 carries a game. But, like, if Drake lands in a different landing spot, if he lands somewhere that he's going to be in a committee, I have no interest in Drake in fantasy because I don't think he's that talented as a runner. And I think we saw that last year. We saw it the year before. Like, you could look at uh, – I'll make my pick in a second, but hold on. Hold up. Wait. Let's look at some of the wide receivers. Parker. Brown, I think Brown will be back, but th this early, 10th round is a little earlier for someone who might not even, you know, I, I mean, more often than not, he'll, or more likely than not, he'll be in the league next year, but there's also a possibility he's just not in the fucking league. Skirt. I feel like Demonte Parker is kind of a safe pick here. Like, if Deshaun Watson or Russell Wilson fucking land here, it's wheels, it's wheels up for Devontae Parker. I, I like Devontae Parker in the 10th round. I think that's a good value for him. So this is the team so far. We got Mahomes. Actually, I really like this team. Damn. Zam. Zam. Patrick Mahomes, quarterback. Akers, Dobbins, Carson, Chase Edmonds, running back. Wide receivers, Keenan Allen, Quilton Sutton, Jerry Judy, Devontae Parker. Tight end, Dallas Goddard. This is one of my sharper teams. This is one of my only good teams I've ever drafted live. I do so many best ball drafts throughout the summer and throughout the offseason. I'll probably do like 150 of them. Some of them are good, but I don't know if I've ever actually picked a good team while you guys are watching me do it. So much pressure. So much pressure. You guys scare me. I get so scared. I get so scared. Fifth. 
feet felt sure this time your smile fades in the summer bop she do do bop okay um where art thou where were we where are we where am i i'm high i'm not high i lied okay okay I kind of like Denzel Mims here. That, that's the guy I was debating with, uh, Devontae Parker, Denzel Mims. Jets are going to have a new quarterback. Denzel Mims was unhealthy for most of the year, but I think he's. I think that dude's a fucking baller. Are you going to take Cole Beasley over? Do I teach y'all nothing? Have I taught you nothing? Cole fucking Beasley over Denzel Mims? It's like, it's like taking fucking frozen sherbet. Over cookies and cream. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Cold fucking Beasley. Cold fucking Beasley. What do we got? Jalen Rager. I like that pick. Darnell Mooney. I like that pick too. I'm really excited to see what Darnell Mooney can do if he gets a uh, if he gets a quarterback. I mean, that's like every fucking every year we say that with every Chicago pass catcher and this is just not going to be the year see what tight ends we got I'm like all in on 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 Gronkowski 13th 14th round in these best ball drafts like all all the way the fuck in all the I'm cave diving I'm like Grand Canyon deep in on that I need to check Robin Hood sorry I'm having fucking anxiety right now I need to see where the stonks are at. I should just put it up on the screen, but like I don't, I don't need y'all seeing my money situation. Did the score go live yet? Did I? Did they even fucking let me buy it? We received your order to buy thirty. Yeah, like okay, then fill that bitch. Fill it. This is bullshit. They didn't even let me. They didn't fucking let me fill the score at twenty seven. Now it's at twenty nine seventy five. This is fucking ridiculous. Bitcoin back up to fifty one. Let's run this shit. Exchanges, not Robinhood, are continuing to place market-wide trading halts on some securities like GMA. Okay, like how they just like point that out to let you know it ain't it ain't them being fuck boys. Marvin Jones, Gabriel Davis. Oh lord, oh lord, are we gonna run out of time. I love Rondell Moore. Draft him, get him. Ah, fuck you, Kenny Gainwell. Fucking Kenny Gainwell. Kenny fucking Gain. I didn't want Kenny Gainwell. I didn't need a running back one. I like ah, Kenny Gainwell's fine. Kenny Gainwell's fine. I. My my breakdown on Kenny Gainwell. We're gonna have a we're gonna have in depth rookie profile breakdowns in in our draft guide, obviously, which uh, we'll be launching within the next like week or two. You can go pre order your copy at bigdogsdraftguide.com, bigdogsdraftguide.com, which will be moved over to bdge.store soon. But that's neither here nor here. Kenny Gainwell, I, I I am not impressed with him as a runner, to be honest. I am not impressed with him as a runner. I know he had a 1,400-yard season, but like Darrell Henderson had a 2,000-yard season on the ground at Memphis a couple of years ago. Gainwell doesn't seem like that shifty of a guy. He's wildly athletic. He's amazing in the passing game, but like I'm 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 a little I'm a little more. Oh, I love Rondell Moore. I think I'm gonna grab Rondell Moore here. I'm a little higher on. Guys that I think will be involved in the running game to, to start because the passing, like, there are not many rookie running backs that start off heavily involved in the passing game. And, you know, from my opinion, if, if you're not a great runner and you're banking on being heavily involved in the passing game, your, your chances of really making an impact in year one are, are very, very slim. So I'm a little bit more hesitant on a guy like Kenny Gainwell. Obviously, we'll see where he lands. He could, he could end up being like a third down guy somewhere. And then the value's not really there, but. Um, I know a lot of people like Kenny Gainwell. He could be a good player. I think he has the upside of like a uh, eh, his upside is actually pretty high because he's a shifty guy who he just needs to be in such a such a uh, perfect situation for it to come to fruition. You know, so like oh he's got the upside of like an Austin Eckler, but remember it took Austin Eckler like a couple of years to get a bigger role outside of just a third down pass catching role. Um, so you know, you know, you know, what we got going on.
yeah, why is this the busiest week of my life? I don't get it. You know what happens? Like during this time of the year, I mean, we're back up to Mondays are behind the business. Tuesdays are, uh, don't say the car's topless. Wednesdays, bunk bed breakdowns, which I don't participate in. So that's like one day off kind of for me. Thursdays, a season long video. Friday is fade the public. Saturday is either this or a Q and assault. Sunday is why yelling podcast version. If you haven't listened to why yelling, please go do so. It's where me and Steve sit down and we talk about everything. Big dogs, brand related, um, business marketing, what's going on in our lives, how much sex I'm not having all those kind of things only in the podcast version, only audio kicking flavor in the ear. Uh, that will be linked down below. So if you go into iTunes, you search why yelling W H Y space, the letter U space yelling, that's where you can find that. So we're doing that much content. And then during this time of the year is when I get a lot of like people asking, asking me to come onto their show. Um, so it's like all those pieces of content, plus the editing, plus the thumbnails for them, plus the, sorry, I'm not like complaining. I just like, I like giving you guys some of the background or insights behind this content creation. Um, so people asking me to come onto their show. So that's like another hour or two kind of out of my, out of my week. Plus clubhouse, this new app. Uh, if you guys are unfamiliar with it, it's almost like it's almost like uh, live streaming for podcasting. Um, it's like, li yeah, it's like live streaming for podcasting. So people open up rooms, they open up these clubs and they're, you know, cater to a specific subject and people are on stage talking. So it's almost like you're in an auditorium and someone's on stage talking. Everyone else is in the crowd and they could raise their hands. They could raise their hands and you can invite them on stage to talk with you or whatever. So I've been I've been spending a lot of time, probably like four or five hours this week on Clubhouse. So we have the guest interviews, we have the clubhouse, and then for the behind the business series, a lot of the dudes I'm interviewing are like much higher level than me. So they have a busy schedule too. So I got to cater to when they can be interviewed, which means sometimes I got to do two or three of those in a week, which is what happened this week. Um, on top of that, what else do we got? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking into like NBA Top Shot. I'm looking into crypto. We're looking into investing into other things in the stock market. This shit is fucking crazy. This shit is my fucking, this shit is, this shit is crazy. All right, what I say? Was Gronk selling the board? Let's go. Gronk's coming bike, man. Him and Brady are going to run a bike. 13th round Gronk. I've never seen anything I liked more. Besides a 5'2 Latina. Looking like a Coke bottle. Skirt. What the fuck? The notification just came on. Lady Gaga's dog walker shot two French bulldogs stolen. That's insane. What do you think? What do you think the the idea behind that attack was? You think the person st stakes out Lady Gaga and knows that someone else walks the dog? That's so intense. Like you had to shoot the dog walker. You couldn't like just fucking put the gun to him and be like, I'm going to steal your dogs. Oh my God. Because you know Lady Gaga is about to pay heavy, heavy, heavy revenue to get those bulldogs back. That's insane. Like, how do you even get away with that? I always wondered that. Like, if I stole something and, like, left ransom notes in the movies, they make it look so easy. Like, you know, meet me here. Don't bring anybody. But, like, you fucking know they got the shoddies in the back. They got the snipers, like, 70. Also, like, in every movie, everybody just knows a sniper that has, like, a fucking. How much does snipers cost? How much does a sniper gun cost? I'd imagine they're, like, what, like, fucking 10K or something like that. Ones that got, like, the red dot on them. That'd be sick. Like, you could just give a sniper to someone that doesn't even know premium pack. Drop, push back at 3 p.m. Yo, does NBA Top Shot like ever do anything right? Have they ever done anything right? Oh, fuck, I'm on the clock. What else we got at quarterback? I think Daniel Jones is a good value, but like a fucking shit. Shit. JD McKissick. My shirt. You know why that you know why this is fucking going downhill quick? Because my shirt's not tucked in. You know, you know, I get thrown off when I do when I do video content that I don't actually edit. That I don't edit. Um, when I do video content that I don't edit, it means I don't do like an intro. Like if I do live streams, obviously, I don't do like it doesn't have the big dogs intro, right? Where that comes on the screen for like 15 seconds or it's like the hand drawn logo. Which means like I usually have the lead up where I'm like, tuck your shirts in, stop yelling, let's eat. Now I don't have that. Now I ain't got it. So like I don't have that moment where I tell everybody to tuck your shirts in, which plays a mind fuck game with me. If so facto, I haven't had my shirt tucked in. 
I actually like that JD McKissick pick. I actually like it. I think he's a baller, bro. And I really think that he's going to continue to be a big part of that, that Washington offense. So I'm actually not mad about that pick. I just pretended to be mad. Big pretender guy. Big, big f fucking fraud energy from me. I signed up for, for Jack Settlement. You all know Jack Settlement? You know, it's funny as hell. You know, it's so... Jack Settlement, uh, should we talk about fantasy? Sorry, guys. I forgot we're like in the middle of a mock draft and I just like talked to myself for 22 hours. Uh, here's the board. Here's the board. Enjoy. Enjoy. Here's what's going on for the last 10 rounds. Let's look at some of the values. Seventh round, again, Jalen Hurts, incre incredulous. Miles Gaskin right now, also fantastic value because if they don't, if they don't put heavy draft capital or get a free agent running back, he's going to go into like the third, fourth round. Uh, Debo at 7'9", absolute love. Brandon Cooks at 7'11", I absolutely fucking love. Eighth round. Don't love the value in the eighth round. Don't love the value in the eighth round. Let's see. Logan Thomas, high volume, very low efficiency. That was, you know, in, in the last mock draft, I think we actually talked about this, where Darren Waller... He was an easy breakout pick last year because he was high volume, but also extremely high efficiency. Logan Thomas was high volume, but very low efficiency last year. So I'm a little bit hesitant if they add pass catchers on Logan Thomas. Ronald Jones, we don't know what's going to happen in that backfield. I, I feel like Fournette probably walks, but Keyshawn Vaughn probably takes a step up, takes a little bit more of that backfield role. I think there's a chance that they draft a satellite back like a Kenny Gainwell. So I'm not, I'm not ready to pull the trig on Ronald Jones. I like Jerry Judy there. I like Jerry Judy a little bit. Um, Oh, yeah, that makes sense because it was my fucking pick, Nick. Jerry Judy, uh, good rookie year, but just overshadowed by the great rookie years of the other guys. O Odell is a guy I just, I mean, eighth round Odell I'm fine with at, at this point. Um, you know, it looks like people have learned their lesson for the last four years. The the injury scares me. He just had so many. He's not young anymore. Noah Fant, that's fine. Um, it's, it's amazing how many, like, Denver pass catchers go early on in the draft. Robbie Anderson. That's fine. Actually, you know, Robbie Anderson actually could be a really, really nice value here in the eighth round, considering DJ Moore is going in the fourth, fifth round, because Curtis Samuel right here is probably gone. Michael Gallup, I don't really want any part of. This, this is like the same spot that he was drafted in last year, and like he didn't really do shit while Dak was on the field. Curtis Samuel, um, free agent, so I imagine he lands elsewhere. David Johnson, like, yeah, we're just going to not do that. Matt Stafford, Kyle Pitts, let's see. Uh, Rashad Bateman, I fucking love. Like way too much. Tenth round, Damian Harris, fantastic value. Cole Beasley, just best best pick of the draft right there. Best fucking pick of the draft right there. Cole Beasley, just love it. Look at these fucking wide receivers: Cole Beasley, Miko Hardman, Paris Campbell. What are you trying to prove? See, see, see. Just I'm just gonna call you cunt boy. Oh boy, we're on the clock. Oh boy, oh boy. What do we need right now? I have like fucking six running backs, five wide receivers, two tight ends. So we're pretty good at wide receiver. Oh, I think I needed, or pretty good at running back, I should say. I kind of needed a quarterback, but not, oh, Trey Lance. That's beautiful. The only problem with Trey Lance is, actually, I, I think Trey Lance is going to end up being a top 10 pick and be a starter somewhere. The only problem is he could land in a spot where they sit him for like half the year first. Like he could go to Carolina where they have Teddy Bridgewater starting for the first month or two, and then they sit him. So like you're missing a month of the season from Trey Lance. But I think since his rushing floor is so high, he's like a very, very good athlete. Trey Lance is like a Cam Newton, Colin Kaepernick type. He is a fantastic fantasy pick, especially in the 15th round. So I don't hate that. Um, mm, not a lot of value at wide receiver actually down here. That's interesting. Russell Gage. Eh, Russell Gage is not a terrible pick, I guess, here. I'm I'm interested to see how the Falcons offense runs with Arthur Smith there because I like I like the fact they're going to have more play action but this is an offense that threw the ball like 70% of the time under uh Dirk Cutter. Dirk Cutter, hate that fucking dude. It's terrible, he's so bad. So they might be a much more run heavy team this year. So that's obviously bad for Ridley, Julio, Russell Gage. But I mean 16th round, Russell Gage at least got a floor and he's going to be the wide receiver 3 there regardless. Van Jefferson, I'm, I just don't really like him as a prospect. And uh, they do have Josh Reynolds leaving, so interesting. Mano Sanders, no. James Washington, no. Preston Williams, no. KJ Hamler, no. Anyone good here? I don't like. I don't hate Brian Edwards. I think he's a really strong play, especially if, uh, especially if 
Nelson Aguilar commands some free agency money elsewhere. Brian Edwards kind of gets pushed into a role. I think I like Brian Edwards here, to be honest. Yeah, I think I'm going to grab Edwards. Probably shouldn't have done it over Russell Gage just to give me a little bit of a floor. Yeah, my wide receiver position got a little weak. That's only because they kept fucking doing auto picks of guys I didn't want. Like, these two picks should have been wide receivers. Gainwell and McKissick should have been, uh, I don't remember who they should have been, but they should have been somebody. Should have been somebody that I used to know. Do you know? Do you know? Okay. Where are we at? We're in the 16th round. It's 11:30. We're making good time. What's this video? 45 minutes. What's up? You guys are still here. I would uh I would love, I would absolutely love. I would love if you ordered me Chick-fil-A. But I'd also love if you um if you just scroll down a little bit and hit the thumbs up button because it lets YouTube know that you like this video, which lets me know that I should keep making them. And uh, it also brings more people to my channel, which means I can live a more lavish lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? And that means, that would mean I would get paid a little more so I could afford a better bed. I could afford better sheets and a better blanket, which means I could actually sleep maybe. And that means I won't be yelling at you all the time. So basically, you hitting the thumbs up button leads to a much better version of me. If we just cut out all the middlemen in between there. All right, what else we got here? Sam Darnold, 16th. Zach Wilson, 16th. I kind of like Zach Wilson down here, too. Not Even if you don't really like him as a prospect, he brings uh, a lot of athleticism to the field. So that rushing floor is always something you're looking for deep into the drafts. Eric Ebron, Adam Troutman. Uh, Jared Cook's going to be a free agent, or he's gone probably from New Orleans. So Troutman I kind of like here. Anthony McFarlane's a guy. I Man, people are really, ah, uh, that's who I should be taking. I wonder if Benny Snell's already off the board. I don't. I have no idea what Pittsburgh is going to do in free agency and in the draft at the running back position but in the range of outcomes which is not the case for a lot of these guys left i'm going to talk about this a lot in every one of these best ball drafts because you can get benny snell and you can get anthony mcfarland in the 16th 17th round james connor's a free agent i, I see almost no chance that they resign him which leaves the door open for benny snell and anthony mcfarland to take over that backfield man and i think the, the upside of owning that backfield is very fucking high do they use an early pick on 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 a running back? Maybe, but like also maybe not. What other teams do you know that if they don't use an early round pick on a running back, these guys are going to, you know, these guys are going to really, really boost up draft boards. Like Todd Gurley, fuck no. Mike Davis, no. Keyshawn Vaughn, no. Lynn Bowden, no. Josh Kelly. Like, come on now. Come on. So I'm I'm gonna be going in on, on Benny Snell and Anthony McFarland in the sixteenth, seventeenth round of like every draft here. Or Keyshawn going in there. How are you going to pick fucking Todd Gurley, Chobby? You're not on my bad side because I really like that name, Chobby. And I like the fact that you put a bulldog into your avi. Yeah, we're going to run it with Benny Snell. Now, you might be asking, how do you concoct your, your roster? How do you know how many players to pick? So it's 18 rounds. As you could see, we have seven running backs, six wide receivers, two tight ends, two quarterbacks. How do I concoct my roster? Well, I usually time out on all my picks, and then however many they make the picks for me is how I end up. Realistic, like if I'm not trying to lie to you, which I try not to, like that's what happens, but I usually go with like two quarterbacks and then three tight ends or flip that three quarterbacks, two tight ends, depending on which of those two is stronger. Right now, I've, I, I think both of those are pretty strong. Goddard and Gronk are fine. Patrick Mahomes, Trey Lance are fine. Running backs, I since you only start two of them each week, uh, I usually go with more wide receivers because this is a three wide receiver starting league. So I tend to go with a little bit. I, I pad the wide receivers a little bit more because you have to start more. Um, but we'll go with the wide receiver here. Renfro, Brashad. I feel like I really think Brashad Perriman winds up in Jacksonville. I don't know why. I just have a gut feeling. Tyler Johnson. Man, this is this is an ugly group of wide receivers remaining here. Let's go Kiki QT. That's what we're going to do. Key QT. What are my what's my thought process behind that? Key QT, you got Will Fuller as a free agent. Yeah, Will Fuller's a free agent. He probably gone. He probably gone. So who becomes a wide receiver too? And Houston doesn't really have draft capital because they trade away all their draft capital. Um so they're probably not going to get a high end wide receiver. 
which means Kiki QT is probably at worst the wide receiver three. There's a chance that I, I still think Sean Watson stays in Houston. So I think Kiki QT has got a little bit more upside than people are giving him credit for down here in the 18th round. And that's it. That's the draft. Um, I will. I think I could share the draft board with you guys. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to put this link into the description down below if you want to actually see the draft board. I'm not actually sure if that's going to work or not or if it's just going to send you to the website. I'll try my best to see how I can share the draft board. Um, but here it is. Here's the final draft board. I don't know why I'm doing this again. Yeah, this is it. So if you want to like screenshot it or whatever, you could do that. Let me, move, let me minimize myself. So thank you all for hanging out with me today. The final team, we went Akers, Dobbins, Keenan Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Chris Carson, Quilton Sutton, Dallas Goddard, Jerry Judy, Chase Edmonds, Devontae Parker, Kenny Gainwell, Rondell Moore, Gronk, J.D. McKissick, Trey Lance, Brian Edwards, Benny Snell, Kiki QT. I actually really like that team. Uh, so there's your draft board again. Here's 9 through 18, so you can screenshot that as well if you want to take a second look at it. Um, so thanks for hanging out today. I hope you all have a fantastic Saturday. I uh, I will see you all. Well, you guys can listen to me tomorrow again on Why You Yelling. That is in iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure that you go download the underdog app so you can draft with me okay that'll be the first link in the description that will be the first link in the comments as well underdog fantasy when you deposit 10 bucks on there to come draft with me use the promo code the referral code the whatever code they allow you to put in there bdge lets them know that i sent you and it helps to brand out i love y'all i will see you tomorrow monday and every fucking day for the rest of my life go hit the stonk market baby